Welcome to this lecture video based on signal flow graph. So in today's lecture video, I'll be covering a numerical non-signal flow graph. So let us consider this particular example to understand how to apply Mason's gain formula to signal flow graph. So whenever a signal flow graph is given to us, what we have to do is we have to name the nodes which are present in our signal flow graph. So let us name the nodes which are present in our signal flow graphs as A, B, C, D, E, F. It is not mandatory, but it will be very useful for us to solve the problem. So what I've done is I've named the nodes A, B, C, D, E, and F. We already know Mason's gain formula. It is given by the equation summation of TK delta K divided by delta, where K is nothing but the number of forward paths Tk is nothing but the gain of kth forward path and delta is nothing but system determinant. So this Mason gain formula can be understood in detail for solving this problem. So let us consider what exactly is meant by this Tk, gain of kth forward path. If we observe this particular signal flow graph which is given to us, we can clearly identify that there are two forward paths. Forward path is a path connecting from the source node to sink node. From A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, and E to F. There is a path from source node to sink node. That is the first forward path which we have. Similarly, we have one more forward path. A to B, B to E, E to F. That is one more forward path we have. So there are two forward paths with respect to the signal flow graph which is given to us. So the first forward path is A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, and E to F. The gains which are associated with those paths are, with, with this particular path is G1 into G3 into G4 into G5 into G6. The path is A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, and E to F. And the gain associated with that is, between A to B, we have a gain G1. Between B to C, we have gain G3. C to D, we have gain G4. Similarly, uh, G5 and G6 are associated with this particular forward path. So T1, the gain of first forward path is G1, G3, G4, G5, G6. Similarly, we have second forward path according to our problem which has been given from A to B, B to E and E to F. That is a path which is associated with it. And the gain with respect to this second forward path is G1 multiplied by G2 multiplied by G6. That is the gain. So we have two forward paths now. That means k is equal to 2. So when there are two forward paths, the Mason gain formula be becomes uh, like this. Transfer function will be equal to t1 into delta 1 plus t2 into delta 2 divided by delta. Because we have two forward paths, we have got two uh, t1 into delta 1 plus t2 into delta 2. If we have three forward paths, we would have got equation as t1 into delta 1 plus t2 into delta 2 plus t3 into delta 3 divided by delta. So first we have to identify the number of forward paths. After identifying the number of forward paths, we have to apply Mason's gain formula. Next, we have identified what is T1 and T2. Next important thing to apply Mason's gain formula to find out transfer function is we need to find out what is delta 1, delta 2, and delta. So let us first find out what is this delta, system determinant delta. To find this delta 1, delta, and delta 2, we need to have a knowledge about loops. If we observe the signal flow graph which is given to us, we can identify the loops which are present. If we clearly observe, there are three loops. C to D, D to C, one of, one of the loop. Similarly, B to E, E to B, second loop. And similarly, B to C, C to D, D to E, E to B. That is one more loop we have. So we have three loops here. So those three loops are clearly mentioned over here. Let us have a look at it. Loop one, C to D, D to C. That is loop one, which is having a path C to D, D to C. So the loop gain for this loop one will be equal to G4 into minus H1, which is minus G4 into H1. Similarly, loop two, B to C, C to D, D to E, E to B. That is second loop. The path associated with it, I've already told you. 
the gain which is associated with it is G3 into G4 into G5 into minus H2. So it becomes minus G3, G4, G5 into H2. Similarly, loop three, it has a path of B to E, E to B. That is a path which is associated with it, B to E, E to B. And gain with respect to loop three is G2 into minus H2, which is minus G2 into H2. So once we have identified the loops which are present in our signal flow graph, we need to find the system determinant delta. It is given by the formula, delta is equal to one minus sum of individual loop gains plus sum of product of two non-touching loops minus sum of product of three non-touching loops. Sum of individual loop gains is very easier to write down because we already know what is L1, L2 and L3. The, those three loop gains we have already found out. So L1, L2 and L3 can be easily written directly. But next important thing is we need to find out which are the two non-touching loops and which are three non-touching loops, pair of non-touching loops. To identify non-touching loops, we have to check the paths associated with it. For example, if we consider loop one and loop two, the path of loop one is C, D, C to D, D to C. And path of loop two is B to C, C to D, D to E, E to B. If we observe C and D nodes are common between loop one and loop two. So loop one and loop two are not non-touching loops. They are touching loops. Similarly, if we have a look at loop three, the path with respect to loop three is B to E, E to B. Whereas the path with respect to loop one is C to D, D to C. If we clearly observe loop one, the path is C to D, D to C. The three nodes which are associated with loop one is C, D and C. The three nodes which are associated with loop three is B, E and B. So these two loops have no nodes common between them. Hence loop one and loop three are two non-touching loops. Similarly, let us check with loop two and loop three. With respect to loop two, B, C, D, E, B are the nodes associated with loop two. And with respect to loop three, B, E, B are associated, are the nodes associated with loop three. If we observe B and E are common nodes between loop two and loop three, hence we cannot consider loop two and loop three are non-touching loops, they are touching loops. Hence, according to our problem, there are only two non-touching loops, which is L1 and L3. So sum of product of two non-touching loops means L1 into L3. Uh, the reason why we have written as sum of product is, or we have got a product. If we have got any other two non-touching loops, we will be writing plus that particular uh, two non-touching loops we'll be writing because we don't have any other two non-touching loops here. We don't have uh, plus um, any non-touching loops here. So it will be plus zero. So L1 and L3 are the two non-touching loops which we have here. So because there are only three loops here and in that um, two loops are already touching, there is no reason to calculate three non-touching loops. It is not at all there. So minus zero, it will be minus zero. Hence delta will be equal to one minus sum of individual loop gains is L1 plus L2 plus L3 plus sum of product of two non-touching loop, uh, loop gains is L1 into L3 minus sum of three non-touching loops is zero. We don't have any three non-touching loops. So it will be minus zero. So I've eliminated that. Now, delta will be equal to one minus L1. L1 gain is minus G4 into H1. L2 gain is minus G3, G4, G5 into H2. L3 gain is minus G2, H2. Plus L1 into L3 is G4 into H1. L1 into L3 will be minus G4 into H1 into minus G2 into H2. Minus into minus becomes plus. Hence, G4 into H1 into G2 into H2. So this is our delta. Now, according to our uh, Mason's gain formula, we have found out T1, T2, and as well as we have found out delta. The next important thing is we need to find out what is delta one and what is delta two. So to find out delta one and delta two, we'll be using this formula, delta K, delta subscript K is equal to one minus the formula with respect to this is one minus loop gains, not touching kth forward path. K here is two because we have two forward paths. So we'll be having two delta Ks, delta one and delta two. So delta one will be equal to one minus loop gains, which are not touching first forward path. 
So if we observe loop gains not touching first forward path means we have to examine which all loops are not touching the first forward path. If we clearly observe here, the first forward path is A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, and D to F. A, B, C, D, E, F. All the nodes are associated with first forward path. So none of the loops which we consider should touch this forward path. Only then we can consider that as not touching to forward path one. That loop is not touching to forward path one. So if we observe loop one, the path associated with loop one is C, D, C, which is touching the forward path because C, D, C is common with respect to the nodes which we have in forward path one. Similarly, B, C, D, E, B nodes are common between the loop as well as forward path. Similarly, loop three path is B, E, B. This B, E, B is again common. Um, the nodes are common with respect to the first forward path nodes. Hence, none of the loops are not touching kth forward, first forward path. Means all the loops are touching first forward path. So loop gains not touching first forward path is zero because all the loops are touching the first forward path. Hence, delta one will be equal to one minus zero. So delta one will be equal to one. Similarly, we have to find out delta two. So the formula for delta two will be equal to delta two is equal to one minus loop gains not touching second forward path. So second forward path, we let us identify which is the second forward path. So the second forward path which we have here is a to B, B to E, E to F. That is a second forward path. A, B, E, F are the nodes which are associated with respect to second forward path. So these four nodes which we have, A, B, E, F, should not be present in any one of the loop. Only then we can call that that particular loop is not touching second forward path. So let us identify that. A, B, E, F are the loops, uh, sorry, the nodes which are associated with the second forward path. First loop, the path is CDC. CDC, the nodes C, D, and C are not at all associated with A, B, E, F. So loop one is not touching the second forward path. Let us see loop two. Loop two, we have B and E. So because we have B and E, definitely loop two is touching second forward path. So we cannot consider that loop two. And loop three, we have B, E again, B, E, B again. So even this loop is touching second forward path. So the only loop which is not touching sec, uh, second forward path is loop one, because loop one, the nodes associated with the test C, D, and C are the nodes associated with loop one. With respect to our uh, uh, forward path two, the nodes associated with the test A, B, E, and F. So with respect to our second forward path, loop one is not touching second forward path. So delta K. So delta K, we already know the formula. Uh, delta two will be equal to one minus loop gains not touching second forward path. The loop gain which is not touching second forward path is L1. So delta two will be equal to one minus L1. So delta two will be equal to one minus, minus of uh, G4 into H1, minus into minus becomes plus. So delta two will be equal to one plus G4 into H1. So whatever uh, delta one, delta two, T one, T two, and delta we have got, we'll be substituting that in our Mason's gain formula to get the final result. So transfer function will be equal to T one is G one, G three, G four, G five, G six. Delta one is one. T plus T two is G one, G two, G six. Delta two is one plus G four into H one whole divided by delta value is one plus G four into H one plus G3, G4, G5, H2 plus G2 into H2 plus G2, G4, G, H1 into H2. So this is how we apply Mason's gain formula to find out transfer function for the given signal flow graph. I hope that you have understood this video lecture. Thank you.